It's March 13th, 2011, the third day after the 9.0 earthquake and tsunami hit Japan. And it's a beautiful, warm, sunny day. But when I got to the train station, you could feel life in Tokyo had not returned to normal. The usually full train was virtually empty and its passengers even more somber than normal. When I arrived at Shinjuku station around 2 p.m., just a few people populated the always packed east exit. On Sundays, traffic on the main street is always blocked off from regular traffic due to the high amount of pedestrians. But today, you could run down the street with your arms out and not bump into anyone. The popular Marui department store was devoid of almost any customers, while game centers usually filled with students are barren of schoolgirl laughter. Even the main strip in front of Kabukicho, which is likely to have major human traffic jams, is missing its mass of clientele. I caught up with a foreign tourist and he gave me his account of the earthquake's effect in Tokyo. The streets are, we were here two and a half days before the earthquake, so we got to experience Shinjuku and Shibuya like that, which was fantastic. And now it's sort of a real somber tone and it's uh, probably, I don't know, one third of the people putting it probably, um, yeah, that's, there's hardly anybody here compared to what it was beforehand. It was, it was crazy. So we were in a cafe in Shibuya. Uh, surrounded by cute little Japanese girls everywhere and the um, table started to rumble and at first we thought, well, earthquake, this is kind of amusing. Uh, and then I think everyone was laughing when we were in there. And uh, it went from sort of light, lightly amusing to very serious very, very quickly. And so we stormed out and we've got most of it on video and uh, stood out in the middle of the street where everyone stood just sort of looking up and confused. Uh, a lot of people were laughing, we noticed, which sort of calmed us down a, a, a bit. Not that we're freaking out. Um, and so when that settled, we went to a um, electronics sort of store where they had all TV set up and we've got this on film too actually where we, we zoomed in watching the TV and then all of a sudden that was when the second one hit the 6.8, 6.2, not sure, the, the second one hit. And yeah, we've got that, that entire thing on video, it's like a Cloverfield Blair Witch sort of thing where the, we just freak out and the camera sort of goes over and we're outside. And the only things that really captured the shaking was the um, like the street lights and uh, and some you know like poles and stuff just wobbling. On the surface, Tokyo looks unaffected, but the streets of major areas of Tokyo are like ghost towns. Convenience stores are virtually cleaned out. I stopped in over a dozen shops and found each one the same, little to no stock of food or supplies. In local supermarkets, customers seem to be in a sort of calm frenzy, buying up little food items that are left on the shelves. Unlike supermarkets in America, that are two to three times larger than Japanese supermarkets, they usually have deliveries more often because of very little stockroom space to spare. Major reason why, in a city of over 12 million, finding enough non-perishable emergency food is getting hard to come by with a warning that there is a 70% chance of around level 7 quake in the next few days and the looming threat of nuclear power plant failure, it's no wonder shelves all across Tokyo will be bare. All of us in Japan have to face the further threat of earthquakes and tsunamis, and all we can do is wait it out.